Thanks. I'm glad you came. I'm glad it's not 93. That's another thing, too. <laughs> so it's great. The trials program, I think, has been really exciting. I've run it for 20 years. Um, I had just finished my internship, and Sandy Mason and I got together, and I called a whole bunch of companies and begged for free stuff. And uh, Proven Winners responded, and later we got some plants from Ball. But most of the, there's a lot of uh, plant producers, Syngenta and a whole bunch of other ones. But most of them just wouldn't even consider us. So I've been very happy that we had kind of an in with proven, gar uh, proven Winners back then. And we were able to get plants. Initially, we could just look in their catalog and say, we want 12 of these and 24 of those. That was awesome. Then we started doing official trials in 2016 where if we didn't keep really detailed notes, we would have been cut from the program. We are the only volunteer or master gardener program in the U.S. plus Canada that are allowed to do this. So the Cook County gardeners are mad at us. Just remember that. So it's great. <laughs> so, but anyway, so it's, it's been a joy. And we get, oh, it's a variety of different things. Last year we couldn't run it. So they're on your list, which I've summarized everything since 2006. These are only the gold medal winners. There were a lot of other good plants, uh, but I put down only the gold medal, and that's a lot. <laughs> so, and I'll point out today some of the better ones um, that have been doing so far. Now, since July, some of them are looking poopy. So I, I don't know uh, why, uh, but things like verbena, they kind of go on vacation like a lot of people end of July and August. They just take off, stop blooming, and sit there. So anyway, um, it's always interesting. We never know what we're going to get. We sign these contracts saying we can't tell anybody what we got until they are introduced at the uh, National Flower Meeting in early April. So this year we got 48 plants. Usually I schmooze them, ask for more bonus ones, but we weren't sure with the COVID last October or November what the situation would be at our garden. So I I said, yeah, we'll do it, and thank goodness Parkland was able to grow them for us. We were not allowed in there, and that makes things tricky. But uh, in the past couple years, they actually do send us some plant tags, which tell us a little bit about it. But many times, we don't get much information ahead of time, so it's a guessing game. We know petunias are probably always going to be good. Now, the best annuals overall, here's a big summary. Petunias do great. Lantanas do pretty well. Euphorbia, and euphorbia, what a strange plant, but it can take a lot of conditions. We didn't trial those this year. Uh, and then we've had some surprises over the year. There is a, a kufia, which all of this is written down in there. There's some in a pot, kufia vermilionaire, in a pot over in children's. That's a wonderful plant. And standing here, one of our past winners, if you see just on this side of the gate is a uh, Penstemon, I'm going to say that wrong, Penicetum, Vertigo. It's got these big burgundy waterfalls of thick bladed grass. That starts out, there's, there's Vanna White, <laughs> my husband. It starts out thumb size when we get these and it grows to magnificence. So over the years, I've been able to figure out what I want to spend my money on and there's a lot I would not. Some do excellent, some do average, and others, nope they get a participation award <laughs> and that's about all so Tom Ward gets mad at me because I've put down calibricoas mainly because we mostly have to plant calibricoas in the ground we didn't do containers this year to make it more simple uh, but calibricoas need a lot of babying they need repeated fertilizer they do not there's some over there they do not really enjoy being put in the ground particularly if you have alkaline soil we have alkaline soil here, and we have uh, sometimes the watering system is alkaline, so they, they have hard time. We got some new ones this year. There's some weird named ones, which are rather exciting. But I am not going over all of these. I just wanted you to get the complete list of everything. Design is always a challenge. It's lovely to have a lot of roundy moundies, but we're happy if we get a few upright plants. And what I've grown to appreciate over the years, particularly in the last four or five years, are two things. One, what was this plant specifically bred for? 
if you understand that, it may be bred to be upright. It may be bred to be cascading. And then if you see it here, the cascading one may not show up as good. So some are better in containers and some are not. So what was it bred for? Some of these lobularia here, the white one in the middle, white knight, that particular one was bred to be smaller and more compact so you could put it in the ground or you can put it uh, in containers and it'll behave better. Versus the first one that came out, the lobularia uh, white, excuse me, snow princess, that I measured it, it gets 36 inches wide. So that's not so good in the container. So they have a specific reason why they are breeding these. They usually have come to us after many, many years of them trialing it. The other thing I think is really getting to be important to me design-wise, and I probably screwed up this year because I didn't get the information ahead of time, is vigor. And they tend to rate vigor from one to five. You ever had a sweet potato take over your entire container? That's probably a vigor of four to five. Now that puppy there, which is Petunia Vista Bubblegum, that is their all-time best seller. They sent us half of the plants were out last year and half of them will be new next year. That guy's got a vigor of five. You don't want to plant that with some of these delicate babies like this pathetic little James Britannia here, which I'll talk about in a bit. That I think has a vigor of one. So maybe it's a good plant and it's not vigorous, I don't know. But the vigor makes a big amount of difference and I tend to go for things like that. So we, we get a little judgmental here. Each month we come out and we rate them on a one to five basis with five being as, oh my gosh, I've got to have that next year. Like the Helianthus Suncredible Yellow. I have to have that. I want to name my new kitten after the brand new one which is coming out next year. It's Helianthus Suncredible Saturn because it has an orange ring around it. I'm just, I just got a new kitten. He's got orange stripes. And maybe that would get us more plants next year if I tell the people <laughs> that. But Saturn is a, like, oh, sunshine in your garden. It's great. So vigor and what was it bred for? Design is always a challenge. You don't know how they're going to grow. And it's just been fun all along. So how about we talk about some of these? Now, on here, I gave you a synopsis of what was doing great in July. Things changed. So we're going to average things. Like there was a magnificent verbena that's over in that area. Uh, Scarlet Star looked fabulous early July. It looks terrible now. <laughs> it's on vacation. Whoops. Ooh, ooh. Here, just a second. Anyway, so it stopped blooming, basically. There was one bloom on it. And ditto the verbena whiteout. Uh, it's over here. I was able to find one bloom to take a picture of today. So those guys are not getting high rating. Our rating three is an average plant. So if you have an average plant, it's nice and everything. If a lot of them die or they're yellow or they died coming out of the greenhouse, that's two or a one. Uh, but as I mentioned, the Helianthus are five today. They're blooming all over. So let me just kind of look at these and I'll tell you some of the the better ones. Now this is a participation award. This will be out next year. What I would love you guys to do, if you happen to have time, in end of August, September, if you see a plant that you definitely would buy next year, write and tell me, yes, I would buy it, or no, I wouldn't, because really that's what the companies care about. They don't care about our comments as much, at, well, the reason we get them every year is because we put in detailed comments, but they want to know if you're going to buy it. I would not buy this. James Britannia is a little tiny, not very vigorous plant with fine foliage. We have the pink one, Dawn, which is kind of neat. They're little bitty flowers, much like a Bacopa or a Sudra. They don't like a lot of water. They came from Africa. They're called African flocks. I I do not see that that looks like a flox uh, that I know of here. But a whole bunch of these died in the greenhouse. Others died after we planted them. And a lot of them were just miserable to start with. So this is growing. The blue one over there has been eaten by Angelonia, but underneath it's not good. So I would not rate this well, even though it's coming out next year. Um, 
going, going along, this has been a winner for many years. This is the Petunia Mini Vista Hot Pink. They had a name change, and they will do that every now and then. They've had some name changes of their coleus. They're going to name change a few uh, verbena and some other plants. But on their petunias, we have, I think, the most success here with petunias. Their petunias are fabulous, and they are bred to bury their dead. What, <laughs> you know, what can be better than that? I don't want to spend all my time deadheading plants. They, what they do is they grow up new plants to cover the old blossoms. That's phenomenal. They're not your grandmother's petunias that were a zigzag brown stick with a little poof blossom on the bottom. So this is the mini vistas. They used to be called uh, charm series, but they're basically as vigorous as the bigger petunias. I don't think anything will match the vigor of vista bubblegum, but some of these little guys churn out as many blossoms as they do and last the entire season. Um, so the, they've changed the name from Charm to Mini Vista. Okay, fine. It sounds good for marketing. But the Hot Pink has been a winner for many years. It has been released several years ago. The uh, Mini Vista White is a nice white. The hardest petunias to grow are yellow ones because they are weaker and they're harder to grow in the greenhouse, followed by the white ones. A lot of white ones will turn into like dirty brown Kleenex when the blooms are done. This one buries its dead. It's a clear crystal white, and it has remained very good. Now, its bigger brother is a new one that will be out next year. Far on the far side, it's a uh, petunia, I think, is it a vista? Snowdrift. I'd have to look it up to see if it's a vista. But it's snowdrift. It's another clear white one. And yes, it is a vista snowdrift. So. Uh, going along, I, we, we make awards for what plants are winners, the what ones catch our eye the most. The Petunia Vista Jazzberry will be out next year. Hands down, fantastic plant. It's been doing great since we first planted it. It has this a much deeper, richer magenta bloom and a dark eye. I think it's better than the old Vista Fuchsia. This one I would buy, without a doubt. It's just electric pink. And it takes a lot of years. They run these big fields of petunias or any trial plant, and there's lots of them that vie for the position, the name of Vista. Most of them are scrubbed. They just dump them. They mulch them all. This guy made it through those really rigorous trials. So Vista Jazzberry. It's got the big overflowing uh, mounding shape much like the bubble gum and what the vistas tend to do is they'll spread out and become uh, wide vigor of four to five but then they tend to mound up and flow out I love it, it it's breached the border here too now they have regular super tunias and this one's been out before but they sent it for us to trial again it's called Sharon it has these pretty little rosette blooms it's a great plant too but you can tell the difference between a Vista and a regular Supertunia. They're both bearing their dead, but oh my gosh, that's great. Um, there was a Vista here last uh, July when we were uh, making evaluation. They rated this as one of the July winners. It's a cypress, so it loves water. It's doing well with the average water, but it, they <laughs> the comments I've got on that, it's fun. It's bad hair day. It's like fireworks. Well, it really is a delightful plant. It doesn't have color to it. It's just green. I love it. So it makes a nice statement here and there. There are a lot of, they have a king tot, a baby tot, this prince tot, which is a much more manageable size for uh, your basic landscape gardening and maybe for a big container too. So that's been a winner. What has been disappointing to me, maybe some of your other ones, is these are the Cascade Angelonias. They will be out next year. There's a purple one and a white one, and it's pretty hard to tell the difference. There's one bloom. Yay. Uh, Angelonias like Verbena do go on vacation with hot, humid months. Has it been hot here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, has it had a lot of rain? Oh, yeah. So they, I don't think, are very good. They have a lot of foliage, very lush that way, but they kind of shut down on their blooming. And that's disappointing to me. In the very back, there's one little purple. 
but I would much rather get an upright angelina for me. These are designed more for a container. I have one of them in a container at home, and the other plants are overtaking it, and I'm unimpressed. I would not buy that. I will tell you an angelonia that I've been amazed at, and I may even buy some to put in here next year just to see if it's because Michigan has more temperate, I don't know. We're just as hot and just as humid as you guys have been, but the angelonia by the Ball Company, uh, I have it listed, it's blue bicolor. Every year I get to, um, country arbors to grow it for me because it is wonderful. And I don't know if it's something in Michigan or here, where is it? Yeah, Archangel Blue Bicolor. I've got it highlighted in yellow. That one blooms from when I put it in all the way through the end of October. It doesn't rust like this. So I, I might just talk Country Arbors into giving us like 10 next year and put them in somewhere, somebody's area, and just see, will this bloom all year in uh, Champaign also? Same zone five, everything. Uh, another new one that'll be out next year is interesting, not the James Britannia, or so-called Texas flock, but this little guy. This is Callilophus. What a name. This particular one is the lighter yellow. It's called Lemonade. And we'll see the darker yellow over there, which has a more intense, rich color uh, called Sun Glow or Sun Drop. Anyway, these are cute things, very fine texture. The other name, which is easier for me to say, is Texas Primrose. So they found a native that will tolerate hot, dry conditions that don't mind the intensity of the heat. Supposedly this thing is fine if it's 100 degrees. We could have used that last week. <laughs> you know, ah, it could get really hot here. And they have these little fine primrose looking blooms. So that's a good plant for the right conditions. I don't think it's gonna like being overwatered. And I also think the vigor is probably a two on it so you don't want to put that with the uh, bubble gum because it will eat it or <laughs> something else but in a container of just this plant or some other well-behaved plants this guy might be pretty nice i myself favor the brighter yellow one so i think that's good now we usually do very well with lantana i'm not sure what's going on with this guy this will be new next year it's called citron and it has a bigger and more intensely colored bloom. It will be the replacement for their Lantana Lemonade. Um, right now, it's just looking like a lot of foliage. It was great last month. I'm not sure why it's doing this. I'm disappointed. These, the Luscious series are bred to be a little bit more small and compact, and also the Royale. If you go south, like visit Florida, the lantana there just makes a shrub, and it, rah, it wanders all over. These tend to be better shaped and better mounted. So I wish that was better. In the very, very back, there's this little pop of blue. That is Argeratum Artist Blue. I hated those as a kid. I, they just look prickly and stupid. I now think they're perfect. The new one, which will be out next year, is the white version, Pearl. I don't think it's quite as good as that, but I would buy either one of them. The white one tends to bury the dead. It looks like little white fuzzballs. We'll see that way over there. Uh, but it does have some old brown blooms. The blue does really well. It's just a little fuzzy blue. And it's a great color, not a very usual color. Deer, bunnies, don't eat them. Bless the adrenaline. <laughs> like, I have so many deers and bunnies. Like, eat everything. That I would grow. Uh, in the very back, just about all the coleus we get, I think, are fabulous. They rate high all the time. They're color blaze coleus. They were raised and bred in University of Florida. They can take hot, heat, and sun. That one is Torchlight. It's been out before. A new one that's coming out next year is way over here, and it's called Newly Nor. It's a black, burgundy, velvety appearance. I don't think that shows as well personally. I know it's in shade. And Joyce so wisely put it with another coleo similar to Gay's Delight. You need something else to offset that. It's a good plant, coleus. I'd rather go with something like that or one we'll see on uh, the south side in a bit. So, newly nor will be new. It's okay. 
tried out Calabricoa. There's two kinds we got this year. A double amber. It's very hard to build or to breed a double a Calabricoa. Most Calabricoa, they don't like it. These have done a lot better than many, many years of other trials. But again, Calabricoa, if you like them, and I know Patty is, where'd she go? Wherever Patty is, she has the gift of growing anything in a container and always looks perfect. Uh, she can grow any Calabrico and it looks perfect, but you do need to fertilize them and it should be in a container. The other thing we've been delighted with are uh, Lobelia. And I, I like to get that confused with Lobularia for some reason. Lobelia, this is sky blue. There's a white one way, way around, which I think shows pretty good. I'll go over here. So we combine white blue. We put these in a little only a spring or a fall plant. It likes cooler temperatures. These again have been bred to tolerate heat and humidity. These might be just fine through the summer here. I, I think they get discouraged when they get too much water up front. Perhaps that happened here. You've had a lot of rain so I'm not sure if that's making a difference. But they're starry little fine uh, textured plants, and they're lovely. They're not quite as good as they were last month, but overall they've been very, very good, and that true blue color has been wonderful. So now we'll go all the way around. What else? Questions? <laughs> uh, artist. Artist blue, and then the white one, which will be out next year. The Artist Blue has been out before. They improved it this year. Uh, Artist Pearl. Pearl is the white one. And I, I wonder, yeah, irrigation systems are great. Because usually you spend all your hours as a master gardener coming out here and watering. But I wonder if some of the plants up front get a little too much watering. If you'll look at the, uh, this is the Lobularia White Knight. It's wonderful. But if you look at the White Knight and the one that will be new, Violet Prince, where Joyce is at now, look at those afterwards. They're perfection over there. I'm just wondering if this gets too much water here. I'm not sure. Uh, but we decided to rate those because they are fabulous. They're a little purple one and a white one. So we kind of go around and see if somebody else, they're doing better. We give it the benefit of that. This one I like very much. I wish it bloomed more. This will be out next year. It is a salvia. And have any of you seen the rocking series, which are tall salvia? They come up to here. There's a purple one. Uh, it's a lot like the salvia black and blue. And I'll, I'll murder the name, the salvia uh, Duranonychia. Oh, somebody else pronounced that for you. But it's of that type. And they're nice, but they, they will have dark calyxes where the old blooms have fallen off. And they're not stuffed with blooms, but they're still pretty good. This is resting a bit. It's got a lot of new ones about to come out, but it does seem to hang on to its old, uh, the old bracts here, which it was much more covered um, last month. Hummingbirds go bananas for this, particularly the pink. Its bigger cousin is rocking fuchsia. And I have always tried to plant that in my front of my garden because the hummingbirds come in and they fight each other. They love this one too. It's shorter, better manageable, uh, doesn't splay open. You could do it in a container, but you need a big container. But I, I like this. We're rating it pretty well. I just wish it had more blooms on it because we're really fussy. You know, <laughs> the evaluation team has been doing this for 20 years. And we want all blooms all the time, all perfect. <laughs> so we're, we're hard to please. This one pleases us, though. The Gomfrina trufula, the best Gomfrina I've seen. An old winter, and that's on your list. And it's got these little yellow dots on it, which we love. They tried to make an improvement of Evolvulus. Here's Evolvulus. It never likes being overwatered. But this one this year is the same color, the same everything, but it's called XL for extra large. So it spreads out more, it blooms easier, it seems more hardy to begin with. A lot of the regular ones died in the greenhouse. This was all sick and yellow looking also, like many of our plants were coming out of the greenhouse. It's been great. 
So if I were to buy an evolvulus because I love that blue color, I'd buy this. They love this down south. It does hot, heat, dry. So I've seen it in the Naples Botanic Garden, much like we had in Serenity here. It's just a whole river of blue, and it was a volvulus. But buy the extra large one next year. There is the regular kind, which is finally caught up. But so far as looking showy since June, the extra large one was better. Now, this is a great pet because that helium uh, the Saturn in the back. I'm not going to probably name my kitten Saturn, but I, I may take a picture with a flower next to it and just lie and send it in to Proven Winners. <laughs> I'm thinking about that because, you know, they like PR. Okay, uh, another coleus, which will be new for next year, is this one. It's got a weird name, El Brito. You know, some 12-year-old made that up. This is El Brito. It does a little bit different. It's a great plant. It's got good color. If you look at the lower leaves, they have more intensity of the burgundy. We kind of think that these on the top look a little faded if it's in full sun. It doesn't matter. It's a really nice plant. But we're being fussy about minor things. So there you have it. Here is the Texas primrose. The, I think it's sun gold. This is the brighter one with that real fine texture. I, I like this. A single planting in a container, good. This was a top winner for July. Uh, Verbena Scarlet Star. It's been out before. It left. It's up in Mackinac now. It left one, one bloom. That's it. These were top winners last month. The Gallardia heated up. This one's scarlet, and there's a yellow version. Uh, you know, I don't think it shows. People are not bothered by all the old blooms, the little fuzzy balls. I would want to deadhead that, and it would kill me. <laughs> I wouldn't rate that plant as much uh, as high, but boy, the blooms were really good. All right. This is salvia. It's the Unplugged series, but it's not. It's unplugged so blue. It's been out for two years. It's a really cute plant. Let me get that off of my face. There. Uh, it, it's different than Victoria Blue. I think it's got more color, a little bigger blooms. I don't really mind the silvery looking old bracts. I think they're fine. But this salvia, clean, healthy foliage. Critters don't eat it. Give it 29 points for that. So it's, it's very pretty dash of blue. This is the Verbena, ah, here it is, Imperial Blue, which, again, was fantastic last month. Now it's down to this. It's on vacation. But it's the improvement over dark blue, and it really was till now. All right. This one I will highly recommend over here, though. This will be new next year, too, and it's... Uh, Heliotrope. I have killed so many of those beautiful purple fragrant heliotropes, the deep purple. This one is tough. It's red for landscape usage. So it's big. It has a lot of branching. I don't mind the old blue blooms on it, the, the spent blooms. It's really, really pretty lavender. And uh, you can pass that around, see if you think it's fragrant, with tiny yellow dots. This is turning out to be a winner so far. I'd give that a five. Now, here's the poor little Argeratum white getting swallowed back here. You can look at that afterwards. It's, it's still a good plant, but <laughs> I think it's getting out of it. Um, I've been very frustrated because I like to make pesto and I like to make basil and use it all the time. And you buy it and you bring it home and the leaves start to drop and turns gray and dies. Great. I grew some in Florida this year. All 15 of my plants got this high. It was died. That was obsession. So I grew six different kinds this year, and we put them in here along with a uh, Proven Winner basil, which Proven Winners has had the basil amazel out for a couple of years. A big, robust plant. And it's a good plant, but I've noticed in the last two years when I shopped at local nurseries, I was looking for that because it was downy mildew resistant. Well, <laughs> half of their stock was dead sitting in the nursery. 
So they're, they're having some problems. Now, we had maybe a third of these die in the greenhouse. They will, you know, the leaves start to drop, and then they die. Well, that doesn't help when you bring it home. So I grew from seed a bunch of other ones. They have a seed-grown one coming out next year. They say it's just as good and just as downy mildew resistant. You know, they all look the same here. Ah, this one, Pesto Besto. Wow. Trying to germinate it because 10 seeds cost $8. It's the slowest of everything to germinate, and it, would, it was short. Now, it's finally gotten up there. I had some die, which I didn't have any of the other ones die. So I think it's a toughie to germinate by me compared to six others. I think that's rational to say that. But it, but it is a good one. And if you can get seed, <laughs> I'm thinking of letting mine go to seed and seeing if I can collect it. So I spent $10 for eight seeds that six di or three died. Anyway, so that's, that's the scoop on that. So we're going to try them out. We're going to have a basil tasting. <laughs> uh, what? Uh, besto pesto. So it will be proven winner seed in their proven harvest collection. Uh, Proven Winners wants to make it big with uh, millennials, I'll say. Uh, it's probably not fair to say. But anyway, they, they want to do this farm-to-table idea, so they have a, a whole line called Proven Harvest, and we've tried out their tomatoes. They're okay. The basil usually is good if it doesn't die. And they've had some little peppers, which were cute, snack peppers. They have some baby strawberries, which have beautiful blooms, and we tried them over in the children's garden. I don't know if I'd buy some, uh, but they're trying to get more food-related things. And besides the basil of the besto pesto and the basil, they sent us some of these, which are garlic chives. They're called Alley Yum. Don't they have good names? <laughs> Yum. And it's supposed to be a chive taste with soft garlic flavor. And you can eat the blooms, which we haven't seen yet. Or you can eat the leaves. You're welcome to try some of these. You're welcome to try some of those. All basil to me tastes the same. I can't distinguish it. I hope somebody else can. So after Thursday, come in the garden, write down what the labels are, and tell me what you think of the taste of the basil. I would love to have that. Anyway, but back to the uh, alley yum. That is the only perennial we got this year. So it could continue through and it's supposed to be decorative when it blooms and also culinary. So, nice idea. Nice idea. <laughs> um, hmm. I can't remember that. You know what? I could look it up. Yeah. Yeah, let's see if it says it's terrible. The flower is edible. It doesn't say... It says the leaves have a waxy coating so, coating, so it stores longer. And it's a good candidate for edging, but it didn't say anything about sterility. And that's a good point. A lot of plants that they grow, like the lobularia, the little tiny fine ones, they are sterile versus alyssum. So they don't set seed and stop blooming. And uh, that's pretty cool, unless you're wanting seeds. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, so a lot of these cultivars are sterile. This is a, a big disappointment. This has been out before. This is Verbena venariensis, uh, but it's their short one, Meteor Showers, and it is mostly sterile. I bought some for home from Sunrise, and it looks great, so I don't know why this is all looking terrible. I, I don't know what's up with it. Um, don't have a reason for it. Oh, here. Yeah, I, and I don't know if this is a water effect the plants up front get more water. This is that Lobelia, the white one, that looks so pretty over there in part shade. I'm not sure why, if it's the part shade protects it or not. But that's most of what I want to say. That is Gallardia heated up yellow. It's the same as the scarlet. And this has a whole bunch of the old, um, old blooms. They are not necessarily objectionable, but this one splays open a little bit more. However, the second graders two years ago rated this the best flower. <laughs> this was their favorite. Yes, pom-poms. <laughs> so, all right, anything else?
it looks like crap. It doesn't get a good rating. <laughs> and one of them is fizzles. So I'm thinking really good. At death rate, I was hoping it would be better. Get through that. <laughs> In Michigan, you know, you've got these coal hate fat. Basil, you really need to wait until it's above 45 degrees before you put it out. Fertilizing can help. Yeah. But I, I just think some are susceptible to disease. Pardon me? I think it's a Mediterranean plant. It is. It likes hot, dry. It doesn't like over water, and it does not like cold, windy days, which is usually when we plant in May, cold and windy. And they just go, Pfft. We didn't put these in until, I think, three weeks after the rest of them were put in. And the same with the coleus. There's another El Brito hiding over here, being very nice. Uh, we didn't put the coleus in right away either because we knew it was going to be cold and windy. And I try to keep things, you know, not below 45. In Michigan, I gave up growing colocasia because I read someplace they really don't like it too much if you plant them when the night temperature is going to be 55 or below. <laughs> when is that? <laughs> yeah. You can wait till August <laughs> and put them in. <laughs> I got rid of mine. But do you have questions about anything? Yes. Uh, verbena will perk up some. You know, you probably need to fertilize it and it will come back a little bit. One of the best things I ever did was uh, Judy and I decided we'd go over the Hartley Trial Gardens at uh, the end of August. That's when to look at trial gardens. And they have these strips of all the different verbena. And if there's one that's living, that's a good one. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the which which petunia? The jazz, jazzberry. Yeah, the one that I'm nuts over. Three. Yes. That's a big vista. Yes. Oh, the cypress, the grassy-looking thing. Sorry. It's papyrus or cypress prince tut. So it's their medium sized one. They have a baby tut that's smaller and then a tall king tut. What? I had a queen tut. I haven't seen the queen. Got all the rest of the royalty. I haven't seen a princess either. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, they, they like to plant that over on campus, so they used to, with these huge, huge uh, concrete pots, and they would plant, like, the king tut in that, and the king tut will get that high. It's really fun. You could almost use that as a bog plant, too. Yes? Um, should we assume that we can find starts of these in local nurseries, or are we going to have to order seeds? Well, almost nothing Proven Winter does has seeds. The only one, they, they are introducing a tomato, which I'm growing this year. I bought that, too. Uh, and this Besto Pesto. Those are the two seed-grown things I know of. So far as all the flowers go, they're tissue culture. So they're very controlled. They're going to reproduce. They're going to be the same every year and hopefully not revert. Uh, but they... In South America, they have these people that are making tissue cultures, and then they grow it, and they um, send it to us in plugs that are about thumb size, so they're already plants. So you have to buy those in a nursery, and they're all very much copyrighted. You're not supposed to take cuttings off the coleus and root it. <laughs> you could, maybe, just in your backyard, only once. No, I, you're not supposed to. <laughs> so... And, and then you've got to find somebody that deals with proven winners. Now, they do have a, in western Michigan, they have a place that grows them, and they will mail them to you at a, you know, it's expensive to get them mailed. The local nurseries around here know that they're good plants. And I'm sorry we don't have ball um, company anymore. So I can talk about all these proven winners. It, they are good plants, but there's a lot of other good breeders out there, too. Uh, the ball, that Angelonia, I love, blue bicolor, they get those in as plugs from the company at Country Arbors. So Country Arbors, Prairie Gardens, Danville Gardens, they all 
carry proven winners. But where I live in Michigan, not many people do. That frustrates me. So I go to Sunrise every April up in Grant Park, the Wold Hoose, and their plants, <laughs> instead of $6 each, their plants for proven winners are, they were two seventy a piece. That's better than $8, $6, yeah. So what do you, you want to spend your money on? Well, bubble gum. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Maybe not this. Yes. I'm trying to remember. It's either five or six. We decided we'd just fill that whole area with bubble gum. It always makes a nice show. And that's another reason why I tend to design where I plant the petunias up front, because they make a nice show. You know, you can tell once here and there that James Bertini are not doing well. Uh, but at least you got the petunias in the front, and they don't mind the excess irrigation in the front either. They're tougher for that. Yes! Yeah. Uh, I think so. I'd have to look at my plans. I don't have them here. Joyce, do you remember? I don't know how many bubble gum are there. I'm thinking it's five-ish. Yeah. Oh, uh, we do not. I just chased one through the children's garden. <laughs> and, and they come and they eat the verbena. Uh, when we had the containers, the little drip spaghetti drip things, they would just chomp those off. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure. They must just get obese and can't move because here's it, feed them, feed the rabbits. Um, at home, a long, long time ago, I went to a garage sale, and they had those wire baskets that you slide in and out of closet shelves. So I bought a whole bunch of them, spray painted them green. Uh, I, the rabbits and the deer eat everything they can at my house. Uh, so uh, up front, I've got some petunias I really <laughs> didn't want eaten. I put three of those baskets over it, and they are vistas there, too. So they just kind of grow through them, and they don't attack them. But a uh, protection, I, yes. Is that within the realm of a breeder to do something to prevent rabbits Can they do that? No. But uh, 17 years ago, I suggested, and I need to patent this, that we should just have a spray that's bunny birth control. Spray it on here, no little baby bunnies, but no one's taking me up on that idea. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Any, anything else? Uh, I think they've done a couple of them in here. Joyce went away. I don't see Joyce. What? She in the front and I can't see her. Oh, there. She's behind someone. She's hiding behind someone. Joyce, you, have you pulled back the Heliopsis at all, roped them in? I do in my yard. I have them inside my vegetable fence because the deer, they don't eat the plant. They just come up and eat the blossom. So there are no blooms on them. So I put uh, two in my vegetable garden, and I did. I kind of made half hoops. I like those half hoops. Hold on. I mean, if we plant the garden tight with a lot of plants that need to be trialed. We squish them in there and you can't see our our walkway now and that's probably a design <laughs> defect, but hey, we got them in. <laughs> <laughs>